Welcome to the Media Library of First Baptist Church of Troy, Texas. We hope and pray you receive a blessing from today's message. First Baptist Church of Troy is a Christ-centered, family-friendly church which offers activities for kids, teens, and adults. You can learn more and contact us by visiting fbctroytx.org. Now, here's today's message. How many of y'all are ready for Christmas? How many of y'all say, man, I should have went to the store one more time? <laughs> it's too late. Uh, I am so glad, I mean, you're here today as we celebrate uh, Christmas and, and remembering that Christmas does change everything. It's because of Christmas that we have hope. It's because of Christmas that we ha can have a future. And yes, again, and I'll say it again later on, it's the cross that does that for us. But if it had not been for Christmas, there would not have been a cross. There wouldn't have been a Jesus. And we'd all be hopelessly lost in our sins. So Christmas does change everything. If you will, in your Bibles, turn to the book of John, John chapter 1, and then find Luke chapter 2, but keep your finger there with John, okay? Uh, because we're going to flip right back to uh, John again. So John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Verses 1 through 2 of John chapter 1. Verses 1 through 2 of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Now, if you will, turn to Luke chapter 2, keeping your finger there in John. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered into his own town. And Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in cloth and laid him in a feeding trough because there was no room for them in the lodging place. Now, if you will, turn back to John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and took up residence among us, and we observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Christmas changes everything. Every year is made up of 365 days. Every year. But within that year, there are days that are life-changing. For instance, a life-changing day for me was June the 2nd. That became a life-changing day for me because that's when Kathy and I in 1984 got married. That was life-changing. Before I got married, I could do whatever Harlan wanted within certain, you know, legal parameters. I could think about myself and what I wanted. But on that day, when we stood before God and before a congregation and exchanged our wedding vows, I had to now consider someone else and what they might think, and what they might want. And I had to now, as God wanted me to, to love her as Christ loved the church. That was a life-changing day for me. It was no longer about me anymore. It was about her and two little kids. Another life-changing day was when I said yes to God to go into the ministry. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined 
what God's call to the ministry was going to be for me. Which brings me to another life-changing day on March 17th, 1997, when I was called to be pastor here at First Baptist Church. Never again in my wildest dreams could I have imagined all that would come from that day. Someone asked, if you knew everything that was going to happen, would you do it again? I said, give me time to think. <laughs> yeah, I would, in a heartbeat. All of us have life-changing days. Maybe it was the day that you graduated from high school. Maybe it was the day that, that you graduated from college. Maybe it was that first job. Maybe it was that first child. For some of y'all, maybe it was that first kiss, right? The first time your toes curled and your hair stood up and you went, wow. But folks, there was another life-changing day that happened 2,000 years ago that impacted and is still impacting all of humanity. In fact, you are here today because of that life-changing day that we call Christmas morning. And, and, and this morning, I, I want to share with you why Christmas is still a life-changing day. Christmas is a life-changing day because Christmas lives can be changed. Notice the emphasis, they can be changed. You may be sitting here today and saying, well, my life can never change. No, it can because of Christmas. The greatest life-changing day occurred a little over 2,000 years ago when Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and laid him in a feed trough for a bed. Joseph welcomed into a world a baby that wasn't his. You won't talk about a life-changing day for him. That was a life-changing day. And out in a field, shepherds were watching their flocks by night uh, when the place was lit by angels praising God and proclaiming the birth of Jesus. That was a life-changing day for them. And on that day, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds encountered a change that would affect their lives from that day forward. What they experienced was extraordinary. They experienced God, the creator of all, the all-powerful, the all-knowing one, wrapping himself in the flesh and being born as a helpless baby. They experienced, as the angels proclaimed uh, to the shepherds, the birth of the Messiah and, their shep and the shepherds. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you in the city of David. The birth of Jesus made that a life-changing day. But it's made every day after that a potentially life-changing day if you will allow the one who was born that Christmas morning into your life by giving your heart to Him. For me, that life-changing day came at the age of nine at Pioneer Drive Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas during a revival. From the moment of His birth, folks, think about this. From the moment of His birth, Jesus has been changing lives. I think back to the disciples that Jesus handpicked and, and, and who traveled with him during his earthly ministry. I mean, you could by no means call these disciples of Jesus as bold followers. You couldn't do that. Upon Jesus' arrest, when he was arrested, what'd they all do? They all fled. They all ran away. In fact, Peter, the night of Jesus' arrest, uh, he denied Jesus not once, not twice, but how many times? Three times, audience participation, just to make sure you don't go sleep on me, okay? Three times. The other disciples, after fleeing, were told, hid behind closed doors in fear that the Jews were going to come for them also. They were scared. Scared for their lives. They were in hiding. But after the resurrection, these fearful disciples became bold disciples. In Luke 24, 52 and 53, we're told that these disciples were continually in the temple 
praising God and blessing God. After the resurrection, they didn't care who saw them. Peter, who denied Jesus on the day of Pentecost, preached Jesus with such boldness that 3,000 people were saved. These disciples, despite persecution, despite being brought before the Sanhedrin, and despite being given warnings not to preach about Jesus anymore, ignored them and continued to proclaim Jesus to everyone that they saw. These same disciples would all go on to, to die a martyr's death, except for John, who would be imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos, where he would write the book of Revelation. The transformation in these disciples' lives is strong evidence that the birth of Jesus and his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead does indeed change lives. And folks, again, there'd be no death on the cross or resurrection from the dead if it had not been for a Christmas. As believers, our lives are a strong example that Christmas is still changing lives. If you're a believer, you're not the same as what you used to be. You may say, well, I'm not what I want to be. Okay, neither am I. But you're not what you used to be. Christmas changes everything. Because of Christmas, we can know a new eternity. We can know a new eternity. John 3.16, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Christmas is God sending his one and only son to this earth to experience life just as we do, yet to live it sinlessly, and then to die on a cross for our sins, paying the penalty of our sins, and to rise from the grave so that we might know eternal life through Him. That's what Christmas is. It's what it's all about. Christmas is God's invitation to mankind to to have a relationship with Him and to change our eternal destination from a place called hell to a place called heaven. I mean, that's what James did when he prayed to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. His destination was a place called hell. He prayed, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus did. And guess what? His destination's changed. It's now a place called heaven. All of you who prayed to accept Christ, your destination of where you were heading was changed. You're now going in a completely different way to a place called heaven. The sole reason Jesus came, get this folks, the sole reason that Jesus came to this earth was to be a sacrifice for your sins and my sins. That's why he came. And I can't reiterate it enough that Christmas was how God, through a baby, chose to enter the world in order to accomplish what needed to be done for your and my sins to be forgiven. Now, Most of mankind thinks that they're pretty good folk. You ask someone to to tell you something about themselves and somewhere down the line, they're probably going to say, well, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not as bad as that person over there. I'm a pretty good person. And, you know, we think that and we think of ourselves, well, I'm a pretty good person. But I hope you realize that that's in direct contradiction to what the Bible says about us. The Bible contradicts that. The Bible tells me that my, the, the righteous of any deed I do, the best of deeds that I do, are nothing but filthy rags when compared to God's holiness. It goes on to say that there is none that is good. No, not one. It says, for all has sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the price of that sin is death. Eternal separation from God in hell. Christmas was needed. Folks, Christmas was needed so that the cross could be accomplished, so that we might know, be able to know God's forgiveness. Because of Christmas, mankind could have the hope of eternal life in heaven because Jesus is hope. That's who he is. And it's only through Jesus that we can have hope. To know that the 
God of all creation would come to earth as a helpless baby, experience life as we do, again, without sin, and then die on the cross for us, and then rise from the grave to give us the assurance that that as believers, we're going to be with Him one day. It is not only a life changer, folks, it's an eternity changer. Christmas changes everything. And because of Christmas, a decision must be made. A decision must be made. Because of this day, because of Christmas Day, every person must make a decision as to whether or not they're going to allow that baby that was born that Christmas day to change their lives. It's their decision. Because of Christmas, we now have to make a decision about what we are going to do with Jesus. We can't just pretend that He never existed. He did. People say, well, Jesus never existed. You can't prove to me. There is more proof that Jesus existed than there is that Plato existed. I mean, my soul, Jesus existed. You can't pretend that He didn't live a sinless life. He did. You can't pretend that He didn't die on the cross or rose from the grave. He did. Christmas forces us to either accept Him or reject Him. It was a decision that the shepherds and the wise men had to make. It was a decision that King Herod had to make. It was a decision that the disciples had to make, that the chief priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, had to make. From that first Christmas day, folks, people have had to decide what they're going to do with Jesus. Because of Christmas, a decision must be made. Decision Magazine published in quote from a Harvard Law professor from the early 19th century by the name of Simon Greenleaf. He said this, a person who rejects Christ may choose to say he does not accept it. He may not choose to say there's not enough evidence. Greenleaf is right. You can't say, well, there's not enough evidence. You got more evidence than you need. You're just saying, I choose not to accept it. So for those who have not made a decision for Christ or who have rejected Christ, it's not, again, it's not that there's not enough evidence that Jesus didn't do something special for you by being born to die on the cross for your sins and then rising three days later to give you eternal life. It's that you've chosen not to accept it. Again, God does not send anyone to hell. People choose to go there by not accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's their choice. They choose. For those who have accepted Christ as their Savior, they're a witness to you who have not that Jesus does make a difference in the life of a believer. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's on you. And we all need to understand that. I mean, those who have accepted Jesus, they'll be the first to say it's because of Jesus. My life has been changed. It's because of Jesus. I'm not the same anymore. Again, they're not where they want to be, but they're not what they used to be. Because of Christmas, a decision must be made about what you're going to do with Jesus. See, Christmas changes everything. Christmas changes everything because Jesus is in the life-changing business. So my question to you, and maybe in this auditorium that have not accepted Christ, those of you who are watching on live stream is, Why not let Him change your life? Today could be a life-changing day for you. Just like that day at nine, it became a life-changing day for me. Because of Christmas, your life can be changed. It can happen. Christmas changes everything. 
Let me ask you to bow your heads in prayer. There's no better time to think about one's eternity than at Christmas time. If your heart were to stop beating this very moment, your last breath was that last one you took, where in eternity would you end up? There's only two destinations. There's not a third. There's two. Immediately you end up in one. A place called heaven or a place called hell. And that place you're at for an eternity. It's not eternity minus a day. It's eternity. There is no end. And there's no hope of an end. If you go to hell. And in heaven, the hope is there is never an end. There's never an end. Today, where would that be? Well, Christmas came so that if you say, man, I don't know where I'd end up or no, I know where I'd end up and it wouldn't be heaven. Christmas changes everything. Because of Jesus, your eternity can change. And if you, just a simple prayer, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you to come into my life and be my Lord and be my Savior. From this day forward, I'm going to follow you. From this day forward, I give you my life. And to the best of my ability, I'm going to live for you. And I'm trusting in you for my eternity. Now, if you prayed that prayer, there's no magic in those words. You have to truly mean them. If you prayed that prayer, then during this invitation time, we're going to invite you to step out into the aisle and come down, take me by the hand and, and, and just and let me know. As James did last week, I prayed that prayer. We want to celebrate with you that your life has changed. This is a life-changing day for you. It's more life-changing than you getting married. It's more life-changing than, than you graduating from high school or college, your first job, whatever it may be. This is an eternity-changing day for you. And we want to celebrate with you. And we invite you to come during our invitation time. Those of you watching on live stream, we want to invite you to email us to let us know that you prayed that prayer so that we can celebrate with you and get with you and give you information that you need. You may be here today and you're a believer. And you've, man, you've been living life as maybe your life hasn't been changed, but you know you prayed, you know you did. And you need to get back on track for Jesus. You need to recommit your life to Him. The altar up here will be open for you to come and kneel and pray and just recommit your life. Or I'll pray with you if you come, if you want me to. But if you're not where you know God wants you to be right now in your life, then I'd urge you to recommit. Get back on track for Him. Jesus came so you can have that life changing. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, man, I would... I need a place to put my church home, my membership. I, wanna, I need a church family. We'd invite you to come if the Lord's leading you here uh, to come and be a part of this church as, as we try to make an impact not only on this community, but the world for Jesus so that they can know life-changing days also. Whatever God's asking you to do today, do it for Him. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Do what He asks you to do and you'll find this could very well be that life-changing day that will change your trajectory in life, whether you're eternity or how you live forever. Father God, thank You for Christmas. Thank You for the life change that comes through Christmas because of Jesus coming as a baby, knowing, walking as we walk on this earth, knowing what we go through. And then, Father, the sinless one dying for those who are sinful and all of our sins being placed upon Him on the cross, the One who knew no sin, becoming sin, becoming our sin, so that our sin could be punished. So that by giving our lives to Him and accepting what He did for us, that we can know eternal life. Lord, that's what Christmas is all about. 
Father, I pray for those who need to make decisions, whatever they might be this morning, that you would be glorified through them. And that, Father, truly, this would be one of those life-changing days in their life. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. From the media team at First Baptist Church of Troy, Texas, we want to say thank you for joining us today. If you have additional questions or want to know how you can experience the love of Christ in your life and family, visit us online at fbctroytx.org and send us a message. Thank you and have a wonderful week.